Oop. So this is Sunday, March 19th. This is at my church here in Mequon. Uh, it's something we do there called Concordia Sunday. It's Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. Um, there are two separate things, two separate extra credit opportunities. The first opportunity is if you show up to church service that day from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m., um, mind you, this is right after daylight savings time, so make sure you pay attention to your clocks. You actually will get one less hour of sleep. Um, if you show up to church service from 9 to 10, I will give you a free A on a quiz. Uh, secondarily, and this is the Concordia Sunday portion of it, um, they have a, uh, uh, a council, it's called Ask the Theologians. Uh, where they have uh, some faculty members from Concordia as well as some pastors who are there where you can come with questions. Um, and you can ask them questions and they'll field the questions, blah, blah, blah. But from your perspective, more importantly, it also comes with free brunch. So there'll be, you know, not like, it'll be good. Like, you know, like carved meat and homemade salads and bread and potatoes and stuffing probably. You know, like, like think of it like a potluck. No ramen. It won't be ramen. Yeah, it'll be like a you know a dinner. So um, if you come, well, yeah. So there's two separate things here. If you'd like to just come around ten o'clock after the church service, but around when Concordia Sunday starts, that'll get you one free A on a quiz. And then you 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 can you have to stay for the presentation though. You can't just eat and run. Okay, so you can come and eat, and you can kind of not pay attention to the presentation if you'd like, but you got to stay. you got to put, put in the effort. Okay? You can also get a free A if, on a quiz if you show up for the church service. Church service. Or you can get two free A's if you come to both. Get it? Okay. So, what's up? Say this one more time. These two A's help. Yeah, that's, this, that's not this class. No, the other class is 10%. 10% will help. So if you go to both, you get a 20% bump. So a 50 becomes a 70. So. What if we're on the men's retreat instead? Huh? What if we're on the men's retreat instead? That sounds like a 3 Is that what the men's retreat is? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. What if he Skypes in or something with Cody? <laughs> All right, th this is the compromise I'll make. If you go to the uh, men's retreat, I will uh, pretend like that's attending the church service. But So send me an email with, I don't know, some proof or something you're going to the men's retreat or whatever. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll call that an equivalent to the church service. But... Not the Concordia Sunday part. So you're out of luck for that part. So the person is from 9 to 10. What about the person taking 10 to probably 11, 15, 11, 20. Good. Something like that. Kind of, it'll, it's probably an hour long presentation, but it'll depend on how long it takes everybody to get from sanctuary into the room and everybody to shut up and them to do the prayer before eating and then start eating and then the guys will start talking. So there's probably some wiggle room. If you have to leave a little early, it's not the end of the world. But Show that you showed up and made the effort, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, don't just come in, grab some food, sit down, eat, and leave. Capiche? Oh, Ian, you didn't get this in uh, senior seminar. This is the extra credit opportunity I talked about in senior seminar uh, uh, yesterday. So, extra credit opportunity. In C it's the same thing, so you can double dip. You can get it in this class and the other class. This is uh, Sunday, March 9th at my church here in Mequon. Um, if you show up to the church service from 9 to 10, you'll get one free A on a quiz in here, but you get a 10% bump in an assignment in senior seminar. If you stay afterwards for the actual Concordia Sunday presentation, which is Meet the Theologians, and it also comes with free brunch, um, uh, I'll give you another A in a quiz in here, as well as another 10% bump in an assignment in senior seminar. Yeah. Uh, is that the correct pronunciation of that word? Which one? Theologians? Yeah. I have a lot of trouble saying the full word. Like, I could say theology. Theology? 
Theologians. Theologians. Yeah, that sounds more correct. Yeah, I was no, I'm, I'm with you. It's a, that one doesn't flow. It doesn't come off right. Theology is easy. The, the, theology, theologians? Theologians. Theologians. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Theology is easy to say, but theologians hits the things differently, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so any questions about this? Again, reminder, it is right after daylight savings times. I think it's overnight that Saturday. So this is as if you have to show up at 8 a.m. for the church service. Okay, you're like, you guys are complaining. You're going to be like shaving each other's backs on the men's retreat. What? Huh. This, this recording has started. Did you want to see it? I didn't send when I tried to send it to you. You tried to send it to me? Yeah. All right. Which is this? One or two? Is this puking or? It's gone, man. Oh, well, I mean. It's not bad. Just yeah. carrots. It's like, oh, that's carrots. Yeah, this is a lot of carrots. There's so many carrots. There's not a lot. <laughs> Maybe that's why you puke. <laughs> Maybe that's why you puke. You're too healthy. Eating rabbit food. Eating rabbit. Shaving each other's backs. I just had to reiterate that for the recording. Just make sure to pick it up. <laughs> that. Enunci enunciate. More important than the whatever happens in this class. All right. What class is this, by the way? This is four fifty. Four fifty. Okay. All right, everybody has this down? I can take it off the screen? All right. Out of curiosity, how many of you are planning on coming to at least the Concordia Sunday part of that? I'm not a I'm not a venture tree. I'm planning on it. Oh, so like several people. Then I'll be an hour late for daylight saving my time. So at least free lunch. We'll just come to the This is the church service and we'll make popular church. All right. 4.50. So remind, where's Baker? Okay, remind me what we were talking about last time. Let's get back into our code. Compiler. Process statement. Oh, we were uh, we wrote our own tokenizer, correct? And I re if I remember, we were just about done with it. I think we still have a little problem, don't we? Where's my? Is it source reader? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a good uh, starting point. Oh, yeah, it's reading the things twice. Okay. So, we're in... Uh, it should be in here. So, process statement. Let's just trace through this and see you pick up where we left off. So, we're reading everything in. Every single time we read in a string, we call tokenized string with that string. Tokenized string comes up here. And what does it do? It First of all, it takes that string and it trims it. So it takes all extra spaces off the front or the end because we know that's a waste of time, right? Okay. If its length is zero, we just return nothing. We're not going to add anything. We're, we are adding stuff to our running linked list, which is a field of the uh, source reader class. Okay. So assuming we have some things to tokenize, here's our special characters. And we could always add things to that. So one of the uh, benefits of doing this the way we're doing uh, it is if we do add some more special characters to our class, they can instantly become tokens by just adding it here. Okay. Um, now, uh, we're going to start building up our current token, so we're going to go through S. Uh, if what we're currently looking at is not a special character, that's what that line says, then concatenate it onto cur token. Otherwise, if it is a special character, if cur token is currently not empty, if it's currently not the empty string, or isn't just a string containing a space, um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add it to our token string. We read a token, got the token, okay? Then we're going to ask, if the character we're cur currently looking at is the space, 
then what are we going to do? Well, then we're going to start building up a delimiter token. Okay? Because you might have, we're basically pushing past spaces. We're ignoring white space. Okay? So, if we uh, um, are not looking at a space as the next character, it must be one of these guys. Okay? But not this last one. We're treating uh, space as special, a special case. So we must be looking at one of these guys. If we're looking at one of those guys, what are we going to do? Uh, where am I? I'm right here. We're going to start a brand new delimiter token, and it's going to be starting off as the string version of the current character. Then we'll start J off at one greater than where we currently are. We want to make sure this is our goal of capturing things like less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, or not equal to, where we have two tokens, two delimiters next to each other. Okay, so we'll start in the very next character. If, minimize this, if the uh, current character we're looking at, the character at bucket J, is not a member of um, the character set, oh, this is where our problem came from. So this says, if it is not in that, what we really want is if it is in that, because we're looking to capture things like less than or equal to. So we're really saying, if the current thing we're looking at, the s.char.j, uh, if that guy is, oh, no, this is right. If it's not equal to negative one, which means it is a special character. Yeah. If... It is a special character is what this says. Then what are we going to do? We're going to tag it on to delimiter token. And then what are we going to do? We incremented I artificially. Okay, because we want our outside for loop to skip ahead one when we finally get back to it. Okay? So we inf imp uh, incremented I artificially. Otherwise, we're going to break out. Okay, we'll break out of this loop because that means we've finished collecting our delimiter. That makes sense? And then what will we do? We will add the delimiter token to our link list. So that seems like it should work, correct? Well, hold on. We're not, we, we have a whole other else thing here. We have a whole other else thing here. So the other else happens is if our current token uh, length is zero, Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab, we're going to start a brand new delimiter token. And the delimiter token is going to be at our current bucket. Because current token, this means that if current token's length is zero, this guy right here, if we're looking at the empty string for our current token, that means that we just ran into a special symbol. We just ran into a, a delimiter, okay? Now... If we have a current token, we're going to go ahead and add it. If we don't, we're not going to do anything with a current token because there wasn't a token we read in. We probably hit a space or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and start building up our brand new delimiter token. We'll start off J equals I. Oh, this is actually the problem. Problem's right here. We should actually just start delimiter token off as the empty string. We were concatenating it on here. And then since we started J equal to I, we concatenated it on a second time right here. Let me show you. This is what we just had. So I started delimiter token off as the string version of my current character. Fine. No problem. We know this current character is one of our delimiters. But then this loop started at J equals I instead of J equals I plus one. Does that make sense? So what did I do? I went through looking for additional guys, seeing if they were in there. So I have a couple of choices. I can do this and then start I off at I plus one, just like we did above, to check the rest of them. Um, I think we didn't do this for a certain reason, for the same reason why we did, shouldn't have done this. We have to choose. I think we did two wrongs, and two wrongs don't make a right. So if we want to keep our code uh, consistent up here, we can go ahead and start our delimiter token and then look past it to see if we have potentially two delimiters in a row. 
Um, but what we don't handle in here um, is what if we ran into a space? And I don't think we handle it up there either. So for instance, we are capturing things like less than n space as a single delimiter token. And we really want things like less than or equal to or not equal to or equal equal to to be treated as delimiter, uh, delimiter tokens. But we don't want less than space to be a delimiter token. Go ahead. Do we want those separated to two different ones or are we going to put them next to each other? We want them to be next to each other because like less than or equal to is in and of itself its own operator. Well, no, we already did that. Sort of. I'm just, I'm pointing out an issue we could have here. If we happen to have code that looks like this, I mean, it'll be bad syntax, but we would have something that looks like less than space equal to. This will pick this entire thing up as a single token. We probably don't want that. So we wanted to get things like less than, less than or equal to, equal to, um, but we really want to completely ignore spacing. So assuming we just hit a, actually let's do this, in this if, we'll say if it's a member of that and s dot char at j is not equal to a space. If both of those are true, then we'll go ahead and tack on the next one. Otherwise, if we ran into a space, we're done collecting our delimiter this time around. And I think we want to do the same thing up here. You said that's worse? Yeah. Um, we must be adding delimiter tokens. Here, let me just real quickly do this. Whenever I add a delimiter token, I'm going to tack on a little D colon before it. It just oh. lets me know how that guy got into the token, the token stream. Okay, so our spaces. What do you mean? Well, the, yeah, because these guys aren't delimiters. These guys are normal tokens. Oh, yeah. So I'm just seeing what, what our code is catching. So that extra space is caught by our delimiter. That extra space is caught by our delimiter. Caught by our delimiter. Caught by our delimiter. So we just need to wrap our adding delimiter. So we need to say this. If delim token dot trim dot length is not equal to zero, then do this. And we can go ahead and take off the, then I'll copy this little if statement. That way we won't accidentally add spaces or empty strings. Okay, well, we did catch one space less than there. Okay, the, the issue we run into there is what if the first character we ran into, our code currently handles if you ran into something that isn't a space followed by a space, don't check. But what if what we looked at was a space? 
So that's where we run into right here. Um, but no, this should handle it. If s dot char at i is not equal. This is uh, they're all doing it before the number, so it'll be in the next set. Oh, we probably <laughs> need to set the limb token up to um, here. This will be our opportunity to do something that Joey likes. We shouldn't have to put parentheses around it. Doesn't like it inside of creating a string? Yeah, maybe it doesn't believe that you're going to pass it a string. And maybe it's like not sure what the return value will end up being from it. I put it all in parentheses when I wrote it. Not this. Oh, you put this whole thing in parentheses? Okay, let's try that. Right. So, what this does, it, this is an inline if statement. I think I've shown this to most people before. Um, but it's actually kind of a interesting trivia programming thing. This is back from a really old, uh, actually came out before C. So C uh, kept this in there. So this first part here, uh, if I'm going to give you the syntax for this guy, it is Boolean expression followed by a question mark followed by the true expression colon false expression. So if this Boolean expression is true, boil down to this. If the Boolean expression is false, boil down to this. Well, in this case, that's what I'm doing. I'm either boiling down to the empty string or I'm boiling down to the string containing a single space. Why would you want to add a space to this uh, Let's see. If it's currently equal to the space, um, oh. I don't want that. I want s dot char at. I want that. So if it's currently a cool space, ignore it and just tack on the empty string to the empty string. Otherwise, tack on whatever s dot char at i is. Okay. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying I'd recommend this syntax for doing this. It just happens to be a cool use for it. I mean, the equivalent of this would be to say this. String... <coughs> delim token equals the empty string if s dot char at i is not equal to a space then delim token plus equals s dot char at i so all that code right there accomplishes the same thing as this one line accomplishes. The one line just looks cooler. This one is easier to follow. Does that make sense? So um, this would fall into the category of uh, something that you will never, ever have to do. What kind of a cool thing to throw in there. Okay, but since we're cool... We'll leave it in there. All right. And now we'll run this. And now we shouldn't create delimiters that have uh, uh, a space in the front. And then we have an example of a greater than or equal to. It captured that. Is that the only one that we have two? We have another example in there. Well, 
Oh, did it capture that as one or two? Which? The parentheses semicolon. It captured as one. Right there. I got part of the two. Mm. Do we want that to be one? It's actually an interesting compiler decision. So right here we have a closing parenthesis followed by a um, semicolon. What's the only thing, the only place in the Java programming language where you would see this? I can only think of one structure. Which loop? Do well loop. Any other structures you can think of that end in a semi or a parenthesis semicolon? Oh, returning anything. <coughs> yeah, really returning anything yeah, right into that. Right there. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, basically what, what what kind of the same example what Joey's saying is whenever you wrap a bunch of stuff in parentheses and then finish that statement off with a semicolon, you might run into a problem. So will we never, oh, never need uh, parentheses right next to a semicolon? Well, the question is, do we want to capture that as a single token? And I don't think so. Yeah. I think we want it as two tokens. So we really need, it, does this only involve uh, semicolons? Are semicolons our only issue? So before we return a delimiter, if it has a semicolon in it, do we want to split it? And we're writing a pretty specialized tokenizer here for our language. All right, so. Before we add our delim token, Could we ever have a situation where there was two semicolons? There would be a syntax error. Or what about Dane's collection of 30 parentheses in a row? That would also be captured as one gigantic operator. You know, so if we go into our code here. We come in right here and just. Now we'll run this. We'll capture that as one gigantic delimiter. Do we want that? Hmm. It should be clear the, the, the issue that we have created at this point. We have some choices. We can either decide, well, let me ask you this. In any programming language, are the reserved delimiters, the known delimiters, is that a finite set? There's a finite number of reserved delimiters, right? So in Java, we know there's a less than, there's a less than or equal to, there's a greater than, there's a greater than or equal to, there's a finite set of those, correct? Right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to deal with these generically. We're saying, well, okay, well, a less than or equal to is just made up of a less than and it's made up of an equal to and they just happen to be next to each other. But to code in that generic solution to that, we're also capturing things like a bunch of parentheses in a row or a, um, you know, nine semicolons in a row or a less than followed by a semicolon, things like that, which would never be correct in our language, right? Would all programming languages have a finite set of reserved words? They would. 
should we then try to go through and identify every possible special case we might ever run into on the backside? Every little weird thing that a crazy programmer might put in a row. Or any made up, how many of you have ever made up an operator while you were programming? <laughs> Most of us, right? It's like, okay, well, like, well, I mean, Dane did it for an entire semester last semester. <laughs> he just eyeballed it and said, okay, is there enough parentheses there? Probably not. <laughs> just, just, he just rode the key, just counted backwards from three in his head. <laughs> I don't know how many just added, but it's probably right. Okay, so rather write the code for the enemy we know, that finite set of operators, than for the enemy that we don't know, meaning the random programmers who make crap up. So we would be better off going into our code here and saying, this is not our set of delimiters. If you remember, I started writing it this way last class. I said we would have a less than, a less than or equal to, a greater than, a greater than or equal to, an equal to, an equally equal to, a not, a not equal to, a plus, a minus, a times, a divide, a mod, an and, a double and, an or, a double or, question mark, a period, semicolon, a comma, a caret, opening square bracket, closing square bracket, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, opening curly brace, closing curly brace, or a space. These represent all of our delimiters. In fact, what we can actually do here is we can, um, we can remove the space from that list. We know that we are going to treat spaces, or anything that looks like a space, anything that is white space, as ignorable. Correct? Is there ever a situation in a programming language where we do not ignore white space? Modern programming languages, at least. Historically, under uh, poorly written compilers, poorly uh, uh, grammared languages, it did make a difference. Okay, so now these are my finite set of delimiters we're going to set. We want to parse on those. Great. <laughs> How do I do this? Go ahead. Okay, how can I put these in an array real easily? There we go. Sorry. There we go. It's still a string. <laughs> Have we seen this before? Yeah, the split method of the string class is uh, very helpful for uh, because it's much, much easier for us to write something out like this than it is to write out all the elements of an array. Now, from a performance perspective, Writing out the elements of the array is going to run faster at runtime, but who cares? I don't care. <clears throat> okay. So now special char array holds an array with bucket zero being that string, bucket one being that string, bucket two being that string, so on and so forth. Okay. Go ahead. You want to add a space to that array? I don't. Not, at least not for right now. I want to think about white space as our overarching special, if I see white space, anything that's white space, completely ignore it. Well, well, the only thing I can think of is 
You gotta have white space between like player variables. You don't. You don't. So you can get rid of like the space between them. Um. Well, white space is certainly the end of a token. So you know, if you say int, you can't say i n t a equal five with no spaces. But if you said int, then you hit that space. Yes, we're ignoring the space, and that's part. Of, it's not part of a token. But because we hit a space, we know we finished the token. So I have all of my known operators, my known delimiters, in an array now. And I just had a string passed in, and I want to split that string up. on all of those guys. Yeah, how do I do it? Oh, well, well, split just took my string and turned it into an array of all those guys. Now we need to go back to the uh, problem at hand, which is tokenizing a string. <laughs> So I just passed in a string, and that string is going to be some source code. And that source code has these delimiters that we have now captured inside of our special char array. Now I need to actually split it up. Well, instead of checking through that string, you just have to check through the array with the uh, S5 character. Now all that array is, right now, is the array has bucket 0 being this, bucket 1 being this, bucket 2 being this. It has nothing to do with the string we passed in. My array does not have, like, int a equals 5. My array just has all my operators in it. Not the operators that came in with my string, but all the operators that exist in my language. So this is the set I'm working with right here. I now need to split my string, the string that was passed in, up where things are delimited by all this crap as well as white space. Now, I'm sure all of that was a waste. Okay, so if the string they pass in doesn't have anything in it, just return. We're not adding anything to our linked list. Otherwise, we got some parsing to do. <clears throat> so what do we want to do? We want to go through S, building up tokens. Every single time we find a delimiter, what does it mean that we found a delimiter? Um, well, true. Uh, how, uh, better question. How do we detect if I found a delimiter? If it equals something, it's in the array. Well, what if I ran into the character less than? Okay. Say this again. Then you start getting back into this uh, issue of... Um, Assuming the programmer is not going to say less than space equals. We want to compare just to these. So if I find a less than, that's a potential match to two separate tokens in my array. Right? I want to keep doing matching until I only match one. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do here... So I'm going to write a private method in here. And really, tokenized string should also be private. Because the process statements the guy we're calling publicly. And uh, private, uh, this method is going to return a string. And it's going to be called match delimiter. And this guy is going to take in a string s, a cur index, a 
and a string array of special chars. Okay. Cur index is the current place we are inside of our string. So that's going to be related to some for loop down here. S is the string that was passed in here. String array special chars is going to be this string array. So it's all pieces that we already have down here. But now the job of this method is to return the full delimiter that is being matched. That is, it will narrow down between a less than or a less than or equal to. So if it's matching just a less than, return a less than, the string less than. If it's matching a less than or equal to, return the string less than or equal to. That make sense? So what we did is we just part, pieced this out and we're gonna write a very simple, well, it's not super simple, but relatively simple, little widget that will come in very handy down here. Okay? So, forgetting what we have down here, if I take in a string, as well as a particular bucket in the string that we're currently looking at, and I say I want to match um, that character, the character we're currently looking at, to one or more of these characters, and I want to keep doing that, keep building on to my delimiter, until I finally match a single one. How would I do that? Well, I'm probably going to need a string, maybe called cur delim. And this guy is going to start off as the string version of s dot charat cur index. As far as we know, that's our current uh, delimiter, right? Now, we're going to go ahead, we're going to create a linked list of strings called matches. And this guy's going to be a new linked list of strings. Now we're going to go through our string. For int i is equal to cur index, i is less than s dot length, potentially, right? I plus plus. Now, the very first thing we want to do is we want to find out how many things. Uh, actually, hold on, I'm, I'm sort of lying to you here. We could do it this way, but I think there's a better way. For int i equals zero, i is less than special chars dot length. I plus plus. I want to spin through all of my special characters. And I want to find out how many of those guys have a first character that match this. Or I could actually look for a substring. So I can say if special chars dot I'm sorry, special chars at bucket i. That guy's a string, right? If that guy dot index of what? Cur de lim is not equal to negative one. That is, my current delimiter is found somewhere in that special char. Okay, if it's found somewhere in that special char, what am I going to do? I'm going to add to my linked list that's fine. I'm going to add to my linked list called matches and I'm going to add special chars at bucket I. Okay, so I'm collecting all of the matches, all of the special chars I ran into that had my current delim somewhere in it. So for things like less than, 
I would have got captured two different matches, less than and less than or equal to. Make sense? Okay, so I would have, so matches would then have two. So if that's true, do that. Okay, now. If my number of matches, the number of things that I've matched, is equal to 1, I have my answer, correct? So I'm going to return matches. Yeah, get first is fine. I'll return matches dot get first. We found our match. Else, if I did not find my match, then what am I doing? Check for the point of it. Well, you'd have to grab the second character of your string if there's if it's not space. You said change the space ever. I have to grab my. Uh, well, I have to pick up another character from my string S, the one at position cur index plus one. Because I think I have more than one guy here, right? Or it could be zero. Though, Say this again. Uh, matches that size could be zero. <clears throat> the hope is we never call this guy when it's going to be zero. But at this point, in context, it's that's true. So, matches has, if I'm still alive here, if I'm in this else, matches has at least two things in it, right? We know that in our, based on our current to special characters, it would have at most two things in it. I don't think there's anything in there that would have more than two matches, right? Okay, but let's not assume that. Because if we did assume that, this would be easy, right? Do we have the triple equal? No, we didn't have the triple equal. This would be easy. All we'd have to do is go back through matches and return the one that doesn't exactly match uh, cur delim. Does that make sense? If cur delim is less than and matches came up with two, oh, actually, we still wouldn't know. We would want, yeah, we would want to match the, oh, we still need to look at the next character. We have to look at the next character regardless. Okay. Well, so this guy, this loop right here goes through and it fills up matches. If we have done our job, if we found the match, then we're going to return there. If we're still alive here, we have not found our match yet. Correct? So... If we're still alive, what do we need to do? We need to go and try to match again by picking up another character. Okay? So, how do I get my next character? <coughs> well, we have an issue here. All of this stuff we are going to potentially, we know we'll only go through it most twice, based on our current set, but we will potentially need to go through our entire string. This is why I took out that, that loop initially. I wanted to give us our inside check first. So for int i, or let's do j, j is equal to zero, j is less than s dot, and it's not going to be uh, zero, it's going to be cur index. J is less than s dot length. J plus plus. What are we going to do? We go ahead and wrap all that. Now I'm going to start off curdlem 
as the empty string. Very first thing I'll do once I get inside here, I'll say curdlim plus equals curdlim sorry s dot char at j. So I'll go ahead and this will get me my initial delimiter the very first time through there. Then we'll try to do our matches. Okay. If we found a match, we'll return the match. Otherwise, what do I need to do? Well, I'm not returning yet. I need to build up more delimiter before I can make a determination, right? So when I naturally loop back up, what's going to happen? I'm going to grab my next delimiter, correct? Okay. But before I do that, I need to empty out matches. So we have something called uh, remove it was just called empty. There is a method that clears it out. Removes all the elements from this list. Yep. Okay. So we want to clear that so that the next time through we try to match again, right? Now, if I'm still alive after this for loop, what has happened? Mm. Could my delimiter have been the last thing in my string? So I might have just had a less than but it matched a less than and a less than or equal to. If I'm still alive out here, is it my delimiter current delim? Now we're expecting this to be rare for us to return that. Most of the time, we're going to keep going until we finally have a match of size one. That makes sense? So we'll come back next time Whatever string comes out of this, we're going to have to take its length into account so we know how far we need to bump forward to skip past the delimiter we matched in our parsing. All right. I'll see everybody on Friday.